Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Dawn's Tailor Made. I posted last night that we were going to be updating a jute bag with a pillowcase. So I have started um, some of this already. As you can see, I have free, done some free motion. Um, but I will take you back to the beginning to show you how this is done. So let's lift right up to the top and I can show you some of my older bags. Morning, Debbie. Morning, Sitel. I hope I pronounced that right. So, shoot bags. These are shoot bags. So you get these, um, you can buy them, um, but you, uh, from the big place with a smile, you can get them on the internet. But um, you do get them for um, a couple of pounds in your local supermarket, which is where I purchased mine from. So this is a uh, smaller one. Um, this, how can I get so you can put it all in? So this is one of the bigger ones. Um, this is the very first one I did. You will have seen this before when I was showing everyone um, my free motion. So this, I copied this from a photograph from the internet where a lady had taken one of her photographs of her daughters and she um, copied out the, the picture and she then took um, put it onto fabric as we do with our free motion. And it reminded me so much of my daughter jumping in puddles when she was younger. So I copied the picture and I've free motioned some rain, you can see. But what I did is I undid the sides of the jute bag and then I attached it all the way around. Um, become my favorite bag, as you can see, it's got lots of holes and it's very worn. Um, but people noticed it and people wanted to buy them so I then made them with pockets so you can sorry ladies I cannot see Teresa I think that is I can't see everyone but welcome good morning so this is actually a pocket um, that you can use so this is a pocket all the way down and then on this side um, I've just divided it at the top just so it doesn't open um, so you can use these for storage I store my big pieces of fabric in them as you know I use lots of duvet covers and blankets and um, pillows and things in my in my crafting so that's what's usually stored in these because they're so big um, but I'm going to show you how I've already taken apart the bigger one because for speed's sake later but I will show you how to take apart the smaller one okay so let's move you back down and we can have a look at how I mean it I don't know if this comes across as, as complicated um, but it really is very, very simple and really effective. As I said, the first time I took it into school, so many people said, how did you make that? I would like one. Um, so what you do, morning everybody, um, is you need to unpick this front, okay? So it's very simple. You push your, push your uh, Seaman Ripper inside here, okay? You can do it on the top and unpick the top stitch or you can go underneath and unpick the bottom stitch it's entirely up to you but once it's a bit like a lot of unpicking it's hard to get started but once you have once you've made that little gap you can then oh, everyone's saying good morning to everyone you are so polite on this group i love it um, so yes, you just once you've started, it's much easier to, to carry on. So what you need to do is just separate this front seam. Now, be careful if you do choose to do it this way because I have ripped fabric doing it this way. Um, but apparently this is how you're supposed to use your seam and cover, like that. Um, but what you want to do is just separate this from its seam, okay? And you go all the way down on that side and then all the way down on that side. Now, when I first started sewing these, I did um, take them apart at the bottom as well, but I found um, that it's much easier to insert the sides, okay, and then just sew along the bottom. So, go back to the original one. I want you to be able to see all of this. So, let's take the pins out. These, I have found, um, have changed my sewing. I know 
um, there's a couple of things I've said, you know, buying my ruler, buying my mat and buying my rotary cutter. But these things, I just got them from that shop where everything is the same price and they are pin curl clips. Now I know lots of people use those other clips, the pretty ones, but I found these just as useful and so much cheaper. And they hold my bigger pieces of fabric or my plastic um, uh, fabric, my oilcloth or my leather. They really do. They really have made a difference. So I wouldn't get, I mean, I would try and pin this is what I used to do but it's really really hard and you do get your fingers so as you can see this is my pillowcase okay I'm just going to take it out so I've unpicked all the way down but at the top just where this top seam is I've stopped okay and then same on this side I've unpicked all the way down to where the um that bottom seam is okay now because of the way that it flaps over you can't do it on this one um, that one you need to keep attached, but you just go as far as you can to the bottom and then you slide the fabric in. Okay, we're going to go back to the fabric in a minute. Let me just show you how we build this and how we put it together. So line this up to your top seam because there is a top seam on your bag. Okay, and then you have your bottom seam down here and you literally just push it in this is after you've measured it obviously i will show you how to measure it in a moment so you just push that in to the sides and then as you can imagine you clip and then i use my roller foot um i hadn't used a roller foot before this used to take me ages to make these did but now with a roller foot is much easier and then you just sew it back up and your bag would be done okay so we're going to have a look at the free motion and then we'll go back to the, the measuring, okay? So I'm going to take my clips out. I'm going to be using my free motion foot. Just take it off the machine so you can have a look. Let's bring this in so you can see. Move all my pins out of the way. So this is another one of those feet that, um, it was one of the first feet that I used with my... Um, with my Janome because it came with my Janome. I'm very lucky that it came came with it. I didn't have to buy it. And um, it was one of the first things I made was a bag and it was a free motioned applique bag that I made for a friend. Um, so if you don't have one, I do advise you to get one. They do become available. You can get them um, with the 32 feet that you can get or the 42 as I've just noticed now. Um, that you can order in a pack but this one is just for my Janome okay and you will have seen other videos where I've struggled to sew with the two other darning feet or free motion feet that came with those the 32 pack and I wasn't able to get a good result with it this is for a low shank machine the others are, are for a low shank machine but I really struggled I found them really really clunky so I would advise that you use a Janome foot um, mine broke, so I um, I was using those other feet, but I have had this mended now. Morning, Helen. I have had this mended now with um, some Gorilla Glue, and um, it's as strong as it ever was, okay? I wish I'd have thought of that before I tried and um, really struggled to sew my, um, my masks that I was making with the free motion poppies on, because it really did make it hard for me. So the same as the foot yesterday, let's just twist that so you can see. You need to place the little bar that you have here. So this is the bar that you have when you take your needle, undo your needle. Sorry, you turn it around. So you need to make sure that this bar here goes over the top, okay? And once it's over the top, it won't go anywhere and then it lines up with the bottom and then you just push your screw back in. Um, can be a little fiddly, um, but make sure that it is in tight. Now, I you do get um, a screwdriver, a tiny screwdriver with your machine, okay? And I have always used that, but I am, um, I have found that the bigger screwdriver just makes it much easier because you've got some, um, can't remember what the word is but it just means that you can really make sure that that's tight okay so i would advise you to to get one of hold of a bigger one when you're when you're screwing your new feet in you see now that is solid okay so 
my needle down, my needle back up, and now both of my my threads are at the bottom, okay? So take your something long, doesn't matter what it is, I'm going to use my quick and pick, and now both of my threads are through that little hole in the cap, okay? Now I know this isn't new to some of you, um, but I just wanted to go over it for the people that haven't done free motion before. And then the important thing that you need to remember is down here on my machine, these are my feed dogs. So that's up, that's down. Put your feed dogs down. The feed dogs are the little grippy things that pull your fabric through when you are sewing. So you need to make sure those are down. If your machine doesn't have leverage, thank you, Marion. I needed some leverage. <laughs> thank you. And um, yeah, so if you if you don't have feed dogs that go down, you can get a plate for other machines, okay? And you can get a free motion foot for high shank machines. I did add that how you work out which is your low or high shank machine, whether you, which you have. So if you if you need that, I will post that onto um, to this video as well if you need to know. Okay, so you pop your fabric underneath, choosing which way. So what you do is you place your hands either side of the needle and you just go backwards and forwards and let your machine um, draw your picture okay so with your feed dogs down your needle isn't your fabric isn't going anywhere it only goes where you push it so that's how you do it you just move it slowly around okay now I have I'm on my default stitch let's turn the machine off back on again that's my default stitch and then I'm going to go down to a one on um, both my um, stitch, stitch length and stitch width okay um, if you're using your foot pedal, you may find this easier. Okay, but as usual, I'm using my start stop. So I'm going to start at the top um, end of this petal. Okay, now I have black thread in the top and I have grey in the bottom, and I just find that gives it a nice drawn effect. So when I learned how to do this um, from Poppy Treffery's book, I'm just going to do a stitch, stop, and then I'm going to cut this. Um, Poppy Treffery's book. That's what she does to give her get her beautiful effects. Okay, so thread off and off we go. Now I'm going to go slowly. Now you don't <laughs> cut that too low, too short. What do I tell you all? Not to cut your thread too short. So I need to re-thread that. Okay. Pop that back in. All you need to do is just is just start again. So you just need to do a stitch and once you've done that stitch you then need to take out this thread okay I just hadn't done enough of a stitch so let's take that out get my seam and pick it up and then just cut it off because what you'll find is you'll be going back over that um, mark and then this long piece of thread will get a little bit um, trapped okay so just there's there are no rules you're just literally drawing with your foot, okay? So I'm just following the bottom of my hoppy as if I was going to be drawing around it um, with a pen. And if you go a little bit faster, it is easier to get a smoother result, okay? And then I'm just gonna come around to the top and I'm gonna follow that petal. So that petal goes down here okay and then i'm going to stop now if you're doing just one line um then you 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 look like you look like you uh, may have made a wob wobbly mistake okay but if you do two or three lines it looks attention intentional so i've gone around that petal once i'm going to go around that petal again and don't forget you can win this bag i say win um it is a giveaway but remember we are raising money for the poppy appeal so this is one of the poppy makes so if you put done in the comments and say that you have done because you can donate online or that you will donate to the poppy appeal um, I will do one of my spinning the comments okay and whichever one my um, computer lands on you will be able to win this bag okay when it's finished so I am really enjoying seeing people's poppy mates and people raising money for the Royal British Legion and our poppy appeal. There's lots of chatting, 
about um, there not being a grade and how we're going to raise money. Well, this is a great way to raise money. Make something with a poppy on and um, get people um, to notice your poppy and then they will hopefully go and buy their own or sew something with a poppy on and um, sell it. And all proceeds, donate them to the poppy appeal. Um, one of the things we're going to be making is some poppy bunting because what people are doing is they're decorating their windows. So we're going to be making some poppy bunting as one of our um, poppy activities and you'll be able to win that too in enough time to pop it into your window and again as I said we just need to make people aware that the poppy appeal is still going on even though we can't join a parade we can still raise money okay we can still donate and as I said I'll put a link that you can donate online you haven't got to wait for your, um, your poppy um, appeal for somebody to come around and ask you or to see somebody I mean I don't even know if they're going to be coming out with their money tins maybe if Christine's watching Christine can um, and let us know Christine Taylor um, is one of the original poppy ladies she's done it for many 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 years such a good cause, such a lovely thing to do. Now, I have taken, cutting my thread off, and remember to cut your um, underneath thread as well, because otherwise that will come through. So let's move this out of the way, and you can see that all I did was draw around where I thought the outside of that poppy was. Sue has written done, thank you Sue. It's lovely to know that you guys all want to support this amazing charity. So, my poppies are done, okay? Now, before I started my um, bag, I cut out my pillowcase, cut up the size that I needed, and then I put some medium fusible fleece, fleece, that fusible fleece, fusible interfacing on the back. Okay, you can just see the pieces there where they would separate. Okay, so I ironed that on to the piece that I needed and then I, this looks like so much fun, you must have a go. You sh really should, Jackie, honestly, it's one of the first things I did and you can just do anything. One of my backgrounds, this is a picture that I made, okay? Now this is one of the classes that you can do, um, a free motion class. So this I made for my um, son and his girlfriend and their dog. Um, it was going to be a Christmas present, but they're going to have to have something else now because... Um, I loved it so much. So this is their house. So um, they've got shoes. She loves Dr. Martens, which I have spelt wrong. Um, my son often wears um, Converse. He plays the guitar. And this is the beautiful Darcy. Okay, and this is their door. So all you do is just free motion a few things that um, the person you're making it for likes. And then you've got a perfect gift for Christmas. And all you've done is literally gone around the bits of fabric like I've just done. So let's pop that back up a little bit. Can you do this with any machine? As far as I know, Sue, um, you can, because if you um, if you can't get a free motion foot, you can sew this. If you go to the Poppy video, Sue, and I'll put a link down below, I show you how I make, how I do free motion without, we're just using a normal foot, just the normal foot that you get with your machine, okay? And it is a bit clunkier, it does take a little bit longer, but it is possible. But the best way is to do it with um, a free motion foot and putting your feed dogs down or getting a plate that goes on the top of your um, your feed dogs and then you, you, know, the, you don't have to put them down. If you um, put a note and tell me what your machine is, I will look it up for you, Sue, and I will find out whether you can or you can't. Okay, but either, there is a way. There is always a way. Let's make this sure this is up as high as it can go. So this is my bag, okay, and I will measure it. Where is mine? So the larger bags are, now I've started in centimetres, so I will stick with centimetres, okay. So this is 43 centimetres across, okay, but I only needed my fabric to go into the centre, but it has to tuck underneath. So just go down half a centimetre, okay, and then you are able to tuck 
um, into that seam. Okay, I love free motion. You do need to interface it. You really do. It makes such a difference, doesn't it, Christine? Christine, if you don't mind me asking, um, are the um, poppy, are they called tins? I don't know what they're called. Will they be going out this year so people can buy their poppies? Or will they just be in supermarkets? I wonder if, if Christine could help us if she knows. Um, she's got her finger on the pulse. <laughs> so I'm literally just tucking that underneath the seam that I cut out, okay? Um, so as you can see, when I measured my fabric, I made sure that it was just under um, the complete width of my bag. So it tucks under here, okay? tucks under here and it doesn't pucker okay and then with the top I just folded it down twice and just did one of our normal double rolled hem seams okay and then I did some top stitching across the top now it's up to you if you want to put a little um sew a little mark into there and that will just make it so you've got you will still have one big pocket but it means it doesn't flap open but if you wanted to buy something like a magazine or some fabric and you didn't want it to bend then remember you wouldn't be able to slide that into here okay now the way that you do the bottom, Helen, I've never tried it. it honestly, careful, it gets addictive, Helen. Um, so once you know how high you want your, um, your whatever fabric you're using, obviously mine's a pillowcase, you then go down to the bottom and all you do is fold that piece up. Now the way that I do it is I lay my fabric on the top, I fold it up and um, I place my iron on the top and I iron that down all the way and then take it off and then iron it properly and it takes a little bit of um twisting and fidgeting and trying to figure out but the bit that you need to be even is you need it to be even at the bottom because all you're doing is tucking that against your um the seam at the bottom okay because we didn't take that one apart if you want to take that one apart then you can what you could do is you could sew down the sides both sides then unpick the bottom I wouldn't recommend unpicking all of it because that's what I used to do and it used to end up that I had all these bits and it got really tricky, okay? So the best way is to just tuck it into the sides, okay? So it's tucked into both sides now and it is level at the bottom. I'm just going to tuck in that side and then all you do is sew all the way around. Now these wonderful clips, huh, there's the name of the other things available, you just attach them to the sides Okay, making sure that is smooth. Hold that down. Making sure it's taut. Okay, and then pop my pins in the other side. Um, I did have another question. People asking me. So I mentioned the um, the purple. I got one more. I thought I had six. I dropped one. Oh dear. Well, I'll show you how tricky it can be when you put a pin in. Okay. Because putting pins in is not the easiest thing to do when you are using a jute bag because it is really, really thick. See, that pin doesn't even want to go in. So this is what I used to do. I used to pin, and that's not going to, not even going to go in. So you do need some bigger clips. Okay. So that's how you do it. You place it in all the way around, and then you're now going to sew. Um, across that seam. Now I'm going to take my I'm going to take my foot off. I'm telling people to put money in the tins in the shops but there doesn't appear to be many supermarkets. Ah okay I can't see the rest of your comment um, Christine but I will have a look at that. So there you go everyone Christine's giving us the, the information we need so yes if um if there isn't anywhere to donate, you can donate online, okay? You can just go online and um, and donate your money to the Poppy Appeal this year if you are unable um, to find a tin to put it in. Um, you know, with the the way that the way the world is, you know, I can understand that we've got to do things slightly differently, but we still need to be donating. Um, so I'm just going to pop my normal foot back on. Um, so we do need to be donating. So try and do it online, as I've said. Um, there are many different groups um, in Facebook. If you put in the Poppy Appeal into your Facebook search, I've just joined one. Um, and I added my mask there saying to please to anyone, if they wanted to raise money, they could use um, the masks 
and um, anything that I've made to do with poppies, they could use it to raise money. Um, you know, I really don't mind. So we were talking about my needle. So this is a purple, um, a purple tipped. Actually, it's not tipped, is it? Because it's at this end. So these are the purple ones. These are Janome ones, and they are for quilting. And they go through. They st what it what, what the um, the blurb says is they stop skipping stitches. So if you're going through lots of bits of fabric when you're quilting, that is what they're for. Um, so I highly recommend them. I use them pretty much for everything now. I mean, I've got a brand new one in that I used this morning when I've um, to do my free motion. But I'm going to take this new one out. Okay, I'm going to place it on this side so that I know that it's not a new one. It's been used. I'm going to use one of my old ones to sew the jute tote because it really is thick. It's a bit like sewing paper through cardboard or paper. Okay, so don't use a brand new needle because you will blunt it. So I'm going to take this needle out, as I've said, so I don't just pop it in there and forget that it's it's brand new today. But I'm going to pop it in that side and then I know that that is, um, that is the one that I'm going to be using afterwards. Okay. I'm going to just put an old one in. So I just keep some of my old ones in my pincushion and that way I know that they are old ones and I can use them because sometimes I sew card, um, put fabric on card, all sorts of things. So it's good to keep those older ones. And I'm going to be using my roller foot. Now, I did a little demi run this morning and I hadn't used my roller foot before, didn't use it when I was making these um, jute totes before. Wow, did it make a difference. So I highly recommend one of these. Again, there's nowhere for your thread to go in. So needle down, needle back up, and then just brush something across and then both your threads, threads will come out of the bottom. Okay, now we're probably not gonna get all of this into the shot, but you will be get, able to get a good enough idea. Okay, let's turn it that way and move down. There we go. So, I need to change my thread. All of you know by now, don't pull your thread back through your machine. Snip it off and take your thread through the bottom. Keep that thread because you can thread a needle and use it later. So I'm taking off my black. Now I'm going to use grey in here because I always think grey or cream, if you've got a patterned fabric or you've got something that's lots of different colours, um, or in this case, so this is like a beige colour and then I've got the white. So I think grey, just kind of, it's not offensive, it's not really bright and it does um, disappear into most um, pattern fabric. So it's the colour that I have the most of. I don't have lots and lots of white because I find I don't use it very often. I don't sew with white very often because um, the white gets dirty. Um, it's just not a colour. I use because if I'm bag making I don't want a bag that's going to look dirty within minutes of, of um, making it. So I'm going to start at the bottom of this side. Okay this is the right side. If I start at the bottom I'm going to sew all the way up to the top. Okay so all you do is open out your sheet coat. Okay fold that flat so everything is tucked underneath. This isn't the easiest thing to do but persevere because the effect is so good. So you can see that's all folded under my bag. And now that I'm using my roller foot, it's going to make such a difference to how um, I'm able to do this really easy. Right, machine off, default setting, back to the beginning, and I'm going to be using a, um, a longer top stitch length. So I'm going to go up to a five and a three, okay, for stitch length and stitch width. Now I'm just gonna... Hang on, what didn't I do everyone? Didn't put back up the feed dogs. I forget every time. Um, please, please don't worry when it, when that happens because the amount of times I've done it and I think, oh no, why is it not sewn? What's wrong with my machine? It's broken. I know many other people have the same issue. Okay, it's not broken. You just forgot to put your feed dogs back up. Okay, so I'm going to be sewing close to, so over where the old stitches were on the shoot tote, okay? So needle down, and then as you sew, your feed dogs will just come back up. And I'm going to back stitch to make sure that that corner is covered. I cannot believe how much easier this is by using this roller foot. 
honestly, I really, really struggled. I made so many of these. They were really, really popular um, at my old school. I made so many teachers. I made them as teacher gifts. I made them um, because, you know, one teacher had a gift and then all the other teachers wanted them. I've done so many different fabrics, but it's a great way of personalising something, giving it as a gift. I mean, gift wrapping at the moment, you know, wasting um, paper and cutting down trees. Just make these one of these a Christmas bag. Okay, you can add ribbon to the top um, and put somebody's presents, put them all in the same bag. And that can be, you know, your Christmas gift wrapping and you'd have lots of these. I mean, this is a lovely colour to go against red. Um, looks very simple, looks very chic, I think. And if you um, had loads of these around your tree with different fabrics on the front, I think they would look beautiful. I think I've just given myself an idea of how I'm going to decorate my tree. <laughs> right, where's my... Just cut this thread off. So, there you can see. So I've put the grey and you can hardly see that. Okay, doesn't mean you have to go out and buy a matching thread for this and you're only going to use it once. Whereas I highly recommend getting grey because grey is something that you could use all of the time. Okay, so now we're going to turn it around and we're going to do the bottom. So cutting off those threads. So as you can imagine, we're going to smooth this out. Okay, I'm going to take my clips to the bottom and I'm going to clip that bottom piece on. Now remember we haven't undone the bottom so all we're doing is we're sewing in the ditch as it were, we're going to be sewing um, not on top but on this piece of um, the white. So make it as neat as, as you can because you will see this but again as I said I've used grey because then um, it won't show up as much. Let's pop that in because that corner has bent. So just make sure um, it's pushed down. Okay, again, we're going to tuck this part of the bag away. This is fiddly, but with this roller foot, wow, it really has made a difference. Backstitch. I'm going to go really slowly because I'm just getting it started. So remember, put done in the comments, and this could be um, winging its way to you. Um, to say thank you for donating to the Poppy Charity. So I'm just going really slowly so I get this even. Okay. Can you see? I'm holding these bits down, okay, and just sewing along that bottom seam, just so I'm catching both parts of those threads. And I'm going slowly, and all it's doing, it's just literally sat in the bottom. And this is the tidiest way and the easiest way of doing it. I mean, if you're going to be making, I don't know how many gift bags you would be making for Christmas, but if you would be making 10, 12, 20, I don't know how big your gift's going to be. So you want a way that's going to make them quick and easy to do. Okay. And as I said, I think this one was £4 when I picked it up from the supermarket. Uh, you can buy them in bulk. Um, I made some nursery rhyme ones for my old nursery and I did, um, I can't remember what it had, oh it had a, <laughs> it had Incy Wincy Spider so it had a drain pipe done, thank you, thank you everyone, um, I had a drain pipe and a spider and all these different things and then we put all of the song bag um, things inside um, and I made lots of those so we just ordered them in a pack of fives because there were five rooms, um, so you can buy them in the multiples that you need. Okay. Um, Tiffany was asking yesterday how to attach a zip um, to her grocery bag, a grocery tote. Um, so you would be able to put a zip on here if you wanted to, if you did want to turn it into a bag that you were going to use every day. Um, that will be um, a tutorial for another day. Um, but you would very easily, a bit like when you're doing... Um, the zipper tabs you just do a zipper tab on either side and then you could attach it to this now you need to stop here and think about your corner you need to make a decision because your corner is bent in 
Okay, so pop your hand in, apologies for the view, and pull out your side seam, okay? Can you it so you can see? So this is my side, okay? This is my front. So pull out your side seam um, and sew it as flat as you can. But what will happen is you will catch one bit of that side seam. It doesn't matter, it won't come undone. You need to go over it back and forth, which is much easier with this, um, with this roller foot. Um, she says, um, I really, really did struggle before. I'm struggling a little bit now, um, but it was much, much harder without the roller foot. Um, try it without and see see how you get on. Because as I said, I've made so many of these; they were such a popular make for people to buy. Um, so there you go. There's my corner. So you can see all I did was catch that seam that we folded over okay and it's just sitting at the bottom which is much easier than unpicking this and going all the way around and now we've just got our last side to do and we're going to go from the top and sew down okay so i'm going to cut off my threads now i when i um I say invented but when i came up with this idea um i hadn't seen it anywhere else on the internet i hadn't seen anybody else do it. i've seen people decorate um these shoot bags um i am more than happy for you to make them and sell them i mean as i said i can't say it's my original idea but i haven't seen them anywhere else i don't know if anyone else has um and i was a little reluctant um to show any makes you know with the business just starting out you know is this something i wanted to share with people but yes if you can make some money I mean, this time we're doing it to raise money. But if you can make some money from your sewing, um, then that's a brilliant thing. So please, don't think this is exclusive Dawn's Tailor Made. If you want to make these and sell these, I found them so popular. At, obviously, we can't do summer fairs and Christmas fairs at the moment. But if you want to make these and sell them, um, a little nod to Dawn's Tailor Made would be nice. Um, but please do. I would love to see you guys go off, make lots of these, make lots of money. And then we can buy lots more fabric um, to feed our habit. Is it okay to call it that? I have a fabric habit, definitely. That's why I've now started to buy um, duvet covers and pillowcases. I mean, I bought this pillowcase. I said before, it's, um, it's from... Oh, I've forgotten her name. Emma Wills. Emma Willis, sorry. Um, she's married to um, one of the guys from Busted. Um, she's a designer. Um, she's on the television. I can't remember what TV shows she used to do. She's done a lot of reality TV shows. Um, but yeah, this is hers. And I saw it um, in the sale and thought, right, I don't know what I want that for, but I'm going to buy it. So that is a really good way of buying fabric. Um, because, you know, you, you have this little, you see this thing, you don't know what you want it for you pop it home in your stash and then something will always come up um, I'm sure that now you know about free motion you've got some big print um, things in your stash that you um, that you would want to do make sure we take all of our bits off okay now I am going to as I said just put a little stitch in the top now, I'm not going to go down like you saw in the previous one um, that was because it was hidden. Let me show you again. Um, because this had a different colour fabric at the top, um, so I just went over the grey. Oh, thank you. People are posting up um, the link to the poppy appeal. Thank you very much, Jackie. So I just used um, a dark grey fabric and attached it. Okay. But because um, this one doesn't have that, I'm going to just go along where I've sewn um, within the seam here. So I'm going to try and put my handles underneath, okay, so foot up. So that's how you put your foot up to do things, to put your fabric under, but it does go up higher, okay. So bending that one down. Now what I did used to do, um, one of Bethan's teachers, when I did hers, I'm pretty sure that she had a po two pockets going all the way down. And I used to sew all the way down here. Oh my goodness, it was tough. <laughs> um, Okay, so you need to find where your seam is and just do a couple of stitches going over the top. 
so that it is um, almost hidden. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and then forwards again. And that's just enough um, to put a little, take that out. <laughs> These handles are really, really thick. Take off my thread. Let's move the machine. So, all I did there was just put a little stitch in the centre so that um, it's now. Yes, thank you for the link, Jackie. That's lovely. And then my inside thread. Okay. Now, as you've seen, that is quite a quick make. Um, obviously, I did do more of the free motion um, when I wasn't filming. And I did stitch down, um, uh, did att attach my fusible interface. But it didn't take me very long. Now, if you imagine that that was a Christmas fabric, as I've said, um, you could be putting things in the sides. You could be filling it um, from the top and just putting lots of beautiful gifts in here and making it um, a nice gift bag. Now, let's go back up. I don't always have the best luck with... Yes, it worked. So, there you go. There is your poppy bag. Now, remember to put done and say that you will donate or you have donated to the Poppy Appeal and this could be coming to you. Um, I think it's a pretty bag. I mean, I haven't done the other side, so you will be, I mean, you could have it so that this side is um, poppies and then the other side you could do whatever you want to do. People is putting done, thank you so much. Um, so yes, you could, all you do is follow the tutorial and then put some, because it has got, um, the shop that I bought it from, it has got that on the back. Um, but I think you'll agree, it's a really nice way um, of just um, making a pretty gift bag or a shopping bag. I mean, I don't go out to the shops very much at the moment um, because of the current situation. So let me show you the other ones again. So this is just, um, this is the one fabric. This is from Higgs and Higgs. I think this is still available. And then all I did was I put a bit of um, grey on the top and then sewn that all the way down. Okay, I, I didn't. I, I attached it here and then attached it um, to the bag the same way, going down the seam. And this is my favourite, favourite one. So this is Bethan, my daughter, when she was little, splashing in the spotty puddles. Um, so yeah, this is a beautiful. It's very, very old now, but this is a beautiful way of um, doing free motion. Remember, there are free motion classes. Uh, I've managed to set up the shop. So you can use smaller ones too. I have managed to set up the shop. I will be adding um, classes and everything from the 1st of November um, because doing all of these lives, then um, converting them and putting them onto YouTube does take quite a long time. So, and I'm still planning my last make, which is the dress, if you remember, that is um, in memory of my, my nan, whose fabric I found, and I'm going to be sewing a tea dress um, for the 11th of the 11th. That's going to be my last one. So doing four um, of these a week is does take a lot of time. So I will add the classes from the 1st of November, which is when, if you remember, this is when the Betty bags are released as well. OK, so 1st of November, lots of changes, lots of things happening. So there will be a shop attached to Dawn's TaylorMade, the normal Facebook um, page, not the group, the sewing group, the normal Facebook page. And you'll be able to go there and... You can book any of the classes. I mean, if you still want to do a class now, then just PM me. Um, I know there's a couple of people that are waiting for the rest of their beginners course, which is five lessons and you can have them whenever you want to. Um, so some people are waiting to finish those. Um, we've got seam classes. The only one that isn't running at the moment is the overlocker class because I don't have an overlocker. But I'm working with Janome and um, hopefully I will have mine delivered and then we can do an overlocker class if you need one. So yes, join me for a class. Um, I will be doing the envelope cushion tomorrow. Um, I was watching the Stuart Hilliard method, which is what everybody seems to be favouring to do the um, envelope book cushion. Um, I started making these a long, long time ago and I don't make it the same as him. So I thought that maybe I could show you how I do them and you know you could choose which method you want to use. I only use three pieces, whereas he does the envelope at the back and then the pocket at the front. And I found that I just use three pieces and it doesn't use as much fabric. 
maybe you'd like to do it that way I don't know but I'm going to um, carry on with the um, if you remember I did the interlacing on my son's pajamas so we're going to be making a Harry Potter um, book cushion tomorrow and we're going to be adding a scarf made of felt to the top so that will be quite exciting so enjoy the rest of your day uh, please please post and let us know if you make one of these bags I think they are um, really lovely um, and we'd all like to see and add your done comments and this could be coming on its way to you enjoy the rest of your day bye